introduce our speaker, Dr. Vikram Patanayak. Thank you for that introduction, Amen. Um, let me just make sure that everything's going all right with the sharing. Can you see my screen? Yes, looks good. All right. Um, so the title of this talk is HLA testing in kidney transplantation. Um, before I start, um, I'm required by my institution to uh, um, show you this disclosure slide. Um, as Eamon mentioned, um, I have an interest in um, gene editing off target profiling, but um, that the content of this talk has um, nothing to do with these disclosures. So hopefully all of you are familiar with what an HLA lab does. Um, uh, but the way I bucket it in case you aren't is that we have three fundamental tests, typing, screening, and cross-matching. Um, some labs also do chimerism analysis, um, but these are kind of the, the crux of what we do for solid organ transplant. I'm going to have a heavy focus on virtual cross-match during this talk. Um, so during this talk, I'm going to start with a brief introduction of HLA, discuss physical and virtual cross-match, and then really get into case examples. So I have 10 case examples to show you um, of virtual cross-match. And then um, at the end, a brief kind of discussion of post-transplant testing and epilim mismatch. So um, to start, um, HLA is an acronym and it stands for human leukocyte antigen. If um, you've taken a lot of immunology or you remember from immunology, you may have learned about major histocompatibility complex or MHC. And so HLA is just the human MHC. Um, in practice, the way you interact with HLA is to see um, reports. And so you'll see typing reports, you'll see antibody screening reports. And so there's a nomenclature to HLA, which I won't get into a ton, except to say that there's a molecular nomenclature, which will give alleles, so like AO201 or DPB10201. But really, for kidney transplant, uh, we're focused on the serological equivalent of, uh, that, uh, of those HLA molecules. So HLA AO201, you'll probably more often see as A2. Um, you're, you might think of HLA as belonging to class one or class two, um, or, you know, some folks just refer to HLA as HLA, and, you know, they just worry about HLA in general without worrying too much about the details. Um, HLA has a crucial role in the adaptive immune system, and so HLA proteins are actually essentially duplicated in a gene cluster on chromosome six, and that's how we get class one and class two. Uh, so an individual's HLA type actually involves multiple proteins. Um, so it's actually six separate proteins, if you can kind of think, for class one, and six plus for class two. So for each of these, you have a maternal and a paternal allele. So that's how you get two per locus. Um, and so you're HLA type can look something like this, where you have two A's, two B's, two C's. And then for class two, it gets even more complicated because um, from a serologic nomenclature standpoint, we will talk about DQ2 and DQ8. You know, we will talk about DQ proteins as if they're one thing, but they're actually a heterodimer between a beta chain and an alpha chain. And with the DRs, um, there is an alpha chain, which is mostly invariant, but then you can have these other DR antigens encoded by the DRB345 locus, and you can get a DR51, 52, and 53. Um, so, you know, this is what an example HLA type may look like. This is what the HLA molecule generally looks like if you're looking at, at the cell from the surface. So it's a membrane protein, and its role in the immune system is to have peptides kind of docked in this groove between these two alpha helices and uh, present these to T cell receptors. So this is, as I said, a crucial role in the adaptive immune system. And it, it plays into why HOA becomes important in kidney transplant. Um, but the reason we talk about HOA isn't because necessarily that it's doing its immune role, 
but because it's actually a highly immunogenic protein because it's on the surface of cells. So if we simplify that more complicated HLA type uh, to just two antigens uh, for the sake of discussion, A1 and B8, um, and we think of a transplant recipient, they have this HLA type. But at some point in their life, they may have been exposed to someone else's cells. So let's say they got transfused. And when they got transfused, they saw cells that had an A2 and a B7. 